So what if we have other variables, um, other variable types that we wish to print out? So what is this? cprinting.c. So let's go there and look at that bit of code that we have. So this shows that I have an array of characters in line seven. I have a null terminated, meaning a slash zero. That's how we end strings is with the slash zero. So, and then I also have just simply Joe in, um, in double quotes. So if I wish to print out, for example, um, percent D uh, as an integer, sum as an integer, it will certainly give me that value as an integer as we saw before in the previous video. And if I want it to, let's go ahead and compile that and run it. And we get um, that the sum is 103. And, and as I showed before, if you wanted that to look like, if you wanted it to interpret the, uh, the integer as a character, when you compile and run that, it will certainly print it out as a character. And there it is, uh, sum is G. Um, so that may be helpful in certain situations to, for sake of sorting um, or organizing or structuring your, your code in a certain way is to work with those characters as integers or vice versa. Now, when it comes to printing out a character, notice that in line 7, 16, it says the character is percent %c and it prints out the character. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, it's specified as a character and it prints it out as a character. Uh, that character is b, but I can also turn around and change in line 16, change it so that it's printing out the ASCII value of that character, which in this case, it shows as 66. Now, now that we've done those two, we know something about characters and integers and printing them out. Um, and the one other thing is we can print out that sum using um, other uh, representations. So even though sum is 103, um, let's take that back down. Even though now sum is 13, I think that's what that is. We print it out, we get 13. But if I want it to see that as a hexadecimal value, I can turn that into an X and it'll print that out as the uh, ASCII value of D. And if I wanted it an uppercase ASCII value, or I'm sorry, an uppercase hex value, then it prints it out as that. And to try to kind of put it in a more conventional format, if I just drop in a zero and an X in front of that and run it, you'll see that it prints it out as ASCII D. So we have that as a possibility for printing out our integers. We can either print them out as decimals or as hexadecimals. And you could even print that out as an octo character. So when I compile and run that, it prints it out as 15. Um, and so that would be the octo uh, representation of our 13, right? So one holds the, you know, that's the multiplier for eight to the first. So one times eight is just simply eight. And then the five is the multiplier for the um, eight to the power of zero. Um, but essentially this is just octal. Um, this value of 15 is an octal representation of the value 13. And then finally, printing the string. If I have this set up to print um, Joe as the file name, I'm going to bring this back in and make one change. So, and I'll comment out line 14. So Joe prints out a character, I'm sorry, line 16 prints out a character and I could have it print um, a single character from the array of characters. So if I say 0, 1, 2, I'm expecting the character to get printed out to be an E and it prints out as an E. So that's just simply printing out a character or a value that's stored 
um, in an array as a character. Now here's where it gets interesting. As a string, Joel I can it's just an array of characters. So I print them out, and that works fine. The way the printf works, it prints out the T, the H, the E, the space, the STRING, and so forth. It goes through and starts printing, and then it sees a percent %s and it jumps outside. And then it's going to go look at the address space occupied by F name 2, and it prints out the J O E, but it doesn't know when to stop running through the characters unless it has a slash zero or the null terminator. So in this case, it works out well because we've placed the null terminator, but there's no guarantee that it's going to work out if we use the other array of characters where it's not null terminated. So when I run this, it could be anything. In this case, it prints out Joe Joe. It prints out, um, it just prints out whatever it finds in memory. So instead of just printing F name one, um, it actually goes through and it keeps running through memory until it finds this other terminating character. So even though we're telling it just to print out Joe, it doesn't know where to stop. And it stops finally when it sees the slash zero. Um, now, if we did not have even that slash zero, um, it's probably gonna go Joe Bob Joe. It'll print until it just keeps running until it gets to um, the end uh, of this final string. So, and there's a reason why it stops there, right? So be careful with your strings, and I'll explain that, but be careful with your strings. They must be terminated with a slash zero. Um, there is no string data type. Ultimately, it's just an array of characters, and what makes it a string is that you have a null termination. Now, it's kind of inconvenient to write um, a single quote, and then it be another single quote, and then a parentheses, and then another single quote. No, right? That takes a, lot, a large number of characters just to print out a three-character um, string, right? It takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So it would take at least sixteen, we'll say, different elements just to print out Bob and make sure it's null terminated. So what we do as a short hand notation is if we want to print out Bob, if we just simply type Bob and put it in double quotes, the null terminator, the null terminator is automatically placed in there. So I, um, by putting it in double quotes, it makes it easier for us to express that it is a string. So when I therefore print out file name three, I compile it, run it, and it just simply prints, um, let's make sure this is three, let's change that to three, compile it, run it, and it prints out Joe. So that's important. If you want to express it as a string, use double quotations. Uh, but you can also use single quotations and just place it in there as an array of characters. But you must be sure that your strings um, in memory are always terminated with a slash zero or the null termination. And if you wanted to look at what that value is for the null terminator, if I say percent %c and then tell uh, my code to print that out, as an integer, well, it's actually stored as a zero. The string is, and it stores that, and really it's, you know, it's a character, but the null terminator is nothing more than the value of zero. That is its ASCII value. And if I said percent %c, printed out as a character, um, it's a null, it's a blank, there's no, output that corresponds to that. So the null character is essentially just the zero, um, a zero integer value.